There are numerous examples where two separate and distinct species from the same genus, often with different number of chromosomes, can produce viable hybrid offspring. The domestic dog is a subspecies of the gray wolf and they can produce viable hybrid offspring. Something on the order of 10% of North American birds, all considered specifically distinct, hybridize with other species. The blood parrotfish is a cichlid hybrid. It was created in Taiwan around 1986 and produced by crossbreeding a Midas with a redhead cichlid. Female blood parrots are usually fertile, whereas males are usually infertile, but there have been cases of successful breeding. The Akau, or Zo, is a hybrid that comes from a crossbreeding of a yak with a domestic cow. The resulting animal thought to produce much more milk and meat. All females born from this cross are fertile, and they breed with either of the original species. The males born from this cross, however, are always infertile. The camma results from breeding a male camel with a female llama. This animal was created to make something with size and strength of a camel, but with the easier temperament and higher wool production of the llama. The camma is quite small when it's born and it doesn't have a hump. Uh, the camma is one of the few hybrids that's always fertile However, as the llama is six times smaller and lighter than the camel, the only way to obtain a camel is by artificial insemination. So, of course, you can also breed two of the fertile hybrid offspring together. The grizzly polar bear, or groller bear, appears both in captivity and in the wild, and there are reported sightings of these animals from as early as 1964. The grizzly polar bear is a fertile hybrid, and there's been a case of a second generation grizzly polar bear, which was shot in Victoria Island. And DNA tests established that the mother was a grizzly polar bear, and the father was a grizzly bear. The koi wolf, which is a coyote wolf hybrid, often occurs in nature. It's so regular, in fact, that all known red wolves have been found to have coyote genes in their lineage. This animal has caused a lot of problems in, in taxonomy because hybrids are not usually referred to as a separate species. The savanna is a fairly modern domestic cat that was accepted as a new breed in 2001 by the International Cat Association. This cat is a hybrid of the domestic cat and the wild African serval. So savannas are a lot more social than most domestic cat breeds, and they've often been compared to dogs because of their extreme loyalty. They are the highest jumpers and the tallest cats in the world, in the cat world, and how large and wild a savanna appears depends on what generation hybrid it is, but they look very much like a miniature version of a cheetah. <laughs> The Wolfen is an amazing undersea hybrid that comes from the bottlenose dolphin having a successful pregnancy from a killer whale. And the killer whale is not actually a whale, but a very large uh, breed of dolphin. So these remarkable Wolfens have been known to occur in the wild, but so far there's only two living examples uh, that I know of left in captivity. Killer bees are Africanized honeybees are a man-made example of hybrids. Some would say a mistake. Africanized honeybees are highly aggressive, hence the name killer bee, and move huge distances in massive swarms. Um, they attack, they ruthlessly sting any threat to death, and I think about two people die each year in the US from killer bee stings. Now the liger is a hybrid between a male lion and a female tiger. So both of its parents are from the Panthera genus, but from different species. Ligers are the biggest of all the big cats, growing to almost the size of a lion and tiger combined. They carry characteristics from both parents. For instance, their love of swimming from tigers, 
and their highly social behavior from lions. Nowadays, ligers can only be found in captivity as their territories don't, don't really overlap. And in history, however, there have been stories of ligers found in the wild. So it, it has happened. Ligers were long thought to be sterile, but in 1953, a liger successfully mated with a male lion and the cub did survive. In 1950, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, issued a statement asserting that all humans belong to the same species and that race is not a biological reality, but a myth. This statement summarized the findings of an international panel of cultural anthropologists, geneticists, sociologists, and psychologists However, many scientific discoveries have been made since 1950, especially in the field of human genetics, that indicate that humanity is, biologically speaking, a hybrid species and not one single race. By sequencing and comparing the complete genomes of various races of modern humans with the genomes of archaic species, such as Neanderthals, Homo erectus, Denisovans, and others, we can start to really envision a planet that underwent several waves of worldwide gene flow and exchange, especially around 35,000 years ago, by modern humans interbreeding with various types of anatomically correct species, not considered modern. The Ice Age, antediluvian world often portrayed in movies such as Lord of the Rings, featuring great battles and romances between dwarves, elves, giants, hobbits. This can be appreciated in light of scientific findings which prove our ancestors indulged in interracial or cross-species mating with multiple races of different archaic hominids. With advances in genetics, and the now politically biased out of Africa theory being constantly challenged, we can once again consider alternative possibilities regarding humanity's origins. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist and now author, and I'd like to invite you to join me in awakening from a long amnesia to rediscover and claim our forgotten history.